to figure out how to turn off this little silly homemade timer. <laughs> don't you love that? That was Melissa's idea. Oh my gosh, now I don't know how to get rid of this. Oh, I gotta do this. Hold on this second, because it's starting a whole new song. Gotta get rid of it. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta work this out a little bit better, Tay. <laughs> Hello, happy Monday, everybody! Okay, I'm trying so hard to fix this. I hope it's okay, I hope everybody can see well enough. And yes, that was Paul Wilbur, those of you who are guessing. We are going to have to figure out a little bit more professional technological way to start with a countdown and a song. That's what I really want to do. And yeah, that was not professional at all, but it worked. It worked. It was Melissa's idea. It was fantastic because I would have never even thought of it in a billion years. Hey, everybody. Thanks. Y'all like my bandana? I'm trying something new tonight. <laughs> so, Welcome to everybody. My name is Michelle Harrell. If you are new to our group, welcome to Glorious Marriage Revolution. Welcome to I Am Ezer, The Glory of a Woman, our new study. Um, my team, Melissa Womack Adams and Jenny Williams, along with several other wonderful ladies behind the scenes, welcome you. You will see Jenny Williams and Melissa Adams on here some too, because they are helping with this show and rodeo. And so you're going to see their beautiful faces a lot as well. I wanted to share with you our mar our mission in Glorious Marriage Revolution is that we are committed to following God as He raises up a generation of women who know how to fight. It seems like my camera just keeps sliding in the wrong direction. Listen, if you are in this group, you will hear us say this every single week. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is the first thing that you need to get settled before you continue on with this study. If you do not know Jesus as your Savior, let us help you. Let us show you how to know him. Let us introduce you to our Savior. If you don't know him and you want us to help you, you can message me at Brian Michelle Harrell on Facebook, B-R-I-A-N Michelle Harrell, or Melissa Womack Adams, or Jenny Williams, or Mary Mission, or Taylor Holcomb, or Hannah Stevens. You can message any of us and put urgent in the message box and tell us that you need to know Jesus, and we will help you, okay? Listen, we're going to do a review from chapter one, and then we're going to move right on into chapter two. But first, I want us to pray. I want us to get started with prayer always, because tonight, boy, do we need it. Ladies, I want you to really put on your thinking caps. I want you to put on your wading boots. I want you to arm up and I want you to be alert. If you have to go get a cup of coffee, tonight warrants a cup of coffee. You need to be alert and you need to listen to me. It's time to go deep, like deeper than I think we've ever gone before, ever. And if you've been with us from the veteran start, you're going to go, what? Deeper than we've gone before? No way. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Oh, let's breathe, ladies. Let's pray, okay? Holy Spirit, we need your help. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I come to you asking you right now to clear my mind. Keep me from all distractions, Lord Jesus. Open my eyes, open my ears. Help us all, Lord Jesus, to have our understanding enlightened by you. That you would show us the deepest treasures of your word. How you want to equip us as your daughters, Lord, blows my mind. It blows my mind. Holy Spirit, without you, I am nothing. You must increase, I must decrease. We give it all to you and we surrender to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Okay, you ready? Okay, so last week was our first chapter. It was, I am Ezra, 
right? And we started out learning how to fight. I'm going to go back in my notes just a little bit because I had gotten myself all together for my first few notes. So I'm going to go back just a little bit. Chapter one was, I am Ezra, your spiritual DNA. All right, we're starting to see how the Lord created us from the beginning in the garden with a spiritual DNA that none of us have ever really known about or tapped into because we've been deceived by that old dragon, the serpent, the old devil. That's what we've been deceived as uh, by, okay? So we also learned what the definition of male and female were. We, we learned that male means uh, to remember or to mark that the male is supposed to remember the things that God has told him to remember the commandments and to move forward with those commandments. We also learned that a female, the Hebrew word for female is nakeba, nakeba, and it means uh, to puncture or to pierce. Okay. It also means like in the form of a, a hole where we are this surrounding, protecting um, force. Okay. We learned about that too. Okay. Then we learned about our enemy, the devil, and we learned about his origins and where he came from. We learned that he was Lucifer. He was an angel at one point, and he was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be like the Most High, and that his place in heaven was going back and forth among the fiery stones in front of the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, that secret place. Remember that? The hidden place. Do you remember? And we learned that he was constantly building that fire, that protected place that protected the glory of God. The enemy was in that place, and he fell from heaven because the, end, the Lord threw him out. He said, you will never be like me. You will never receive worship like me because you are not the most high. And so he kicked him out. And so he knew the plans of redemption because he was in that most secret place, and he was here in the plans of redemption, and he wanted to stop it. So we learned last week that the enemy went after Eve, because Eve in her spiritual DNA was Ezer. And Ezer, we learned, means a military force, a military strength, a surrounding protection or aid. That's what we learned about Ezer. And Konegdo, help meet Ezer Konegdo, those two Hebrew words are the most complicated Hebrew words to translate down into English. Remember, we talked about that. And Ezer Konegdo not only means that surrounding military protection and, and force and aid and help, but we learn that Konegdo means a mirror image, almost exactly the same, working in correspondence. So if we look at this the way that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work, He is a protecting force. He is a military force around us. He is a protection. And he also, they work together in correspondence with each other. There is never a contradiction. There, there's no disunity in the Trinity. And so we, male and female, we were created to be like him in his image, not just men. Okay, men were not only created in God's image and we were just this secondhand citizen that came on the scene. No, we were also created in the image of God, which we have to, going forward from this point forward, now that we've got a little bit of the bulk of the review behind us, I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise me this thing just is driving me crazy because it keeps tilting. Um, promise me that you will think outside the box with me tonight. Promise me that you will don't think in the natural mind, all right? We are thinking spiritual-minded tonight. We are thinking different. We are not thinking male anatomical. We are not thinking female anatomical, okay? When we think of male and female, that's what our minds automatically go to because that's all we know in the physical Okay, so I want you to step out of that with me for a little bit tonight. Okay, I need you to give me some hearts, some thumbs up, some like something, something, something to tell me, comment, and let me know. 
yes, I'm on board with you. Yes, I'm willing to step outside this box that I, that, that I know so well that I've only ever known. I want to step outside that box. So help me out here. Go with me here. I also want you to throw a few comments in about your assignments from last week. Before we move forward, I would love to know what you thought about those. Um, if you haven't seen them, they are in albums. Um, on the page, you can go to albums and it's assignments for Ezer and you will see the first one and they were broken down into sections to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, thank you for the hearts. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're willing to step outside your box with me. Um, this is going to, this is going to make all of us feel Ooh, like wow and in awe and a little, mm, this is weird kind of thing, okay? So in the in the assignments, what did you think about those? What did you think about your memory verses? Who worked on your memory verses? Just start commenting and I'll go back and read the comments later. That's what I do until midnight on Monday nights, every night. Like every Monday night, I get on here, I get it all out and then I just have so much fun going back and reading your comments. So comment away because it just feeds this Fire, okay, I want to know what you thought about those assignments. Did you do your memory verses? Did you do your call of action? Call to action. I saw some of you post in your I am Ezer and that I am healed. I am beautiful. I am I'm worthy. I saw those and I, oh my gosh, it just pumped me up with so fabulous. So I, what did you get out of last week? What did the Lord tell you from last week? What what did you learn? So we want to know these things, okay? So comment real quick as we're getting started in chapter two. And I, the title of this chapter is A Wall of Fire Around and the Glory Within. And it comes from Zechariah chapter two, okay? So flip open your Bibles after you comment. <laughs> flip open your Bibles to Zechariah chapter two. Now this verse was, the Lord laid this verse on my heart like weeks ago, weeks ago. Okay, and I didn't really know why. So remember how I told you guys when we were first starting this and we were we were just kind of leading up and I would hop on every now and again and just give a little tidbit or whatever. And I would say, y'all, literally the Lord is like leading me one step at a time and giving me little puzzle pieces that are just kind of all over the place. And they're these beautiful puzzle pieces, but none of them seem to fit together yet. And I don't really know. And so I'm writing them all down in chunks right okay so that's exactly what I was doing I wrote that down because I could not get away from this verse and I wanted to know why the Lord wanted me to do it but I knew I had to write it down so today it all came into play today and it's just like my mind is just blowing right now like I feel like the little emoji the little new emoji that's been on there where it's the face and then the mind's going like this and it's all in a piece. That's how I felt all day long, okay? All day long. So what we are about to do is this is truth, the Word of God, truth straight from the Word of God, not from a translation, not from a commentary, but from the very Hebrew definition of the Word of God, the truth, the deep truths of God's Word. We are about to dispel us some lies, okay? If you know what the word dispel means, that right there in and of itself is going to make you go, what? Yes, the word dispel means to make a doubt, a feeling, or a belief disappear. That's what we're about to do. We are about to expose the enemy for what he really did to us back in the garden and what he has done to us through all these thousands of years. Can I just tell you, I know what the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes. I know that Solomon said there is nothing new under the sun, and there's not. I don't claim to have some new, fresh revelation that no one else has ever heard or taught, but I will tell you this. This girl has never heard anybody teach it or preach it, ever. So I don't claim to have the one new thing under the sun. I don't, because it was in the Word of God from the beginning. So there is nothing new under the sun. But I will say this, it's going to be new to all of us because it was new to me. And hello, get ready. Okay? All right. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5. Here's where this whole chapter stems from. And we're going to go from here, so just hang on. Verse 5, chapter 2, Zechariah. 
For I, saith the Lord, and he's talking of Jerusalem, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Now he's talking about being a wall of fire around Jerusalem and being the glory in the midst of her. So I'm, I'm sitting there today. My mind cannot get off of this verse and I'm just, Lord, okay. I mean, this started, y'all, this started at nine o'clock this morning. And I was like, okay, Lord, where are you taking us with this? And so one little thing just popped into my mind after another, okay? This is what, we're just going to break these down into sections, just little pieces. A wall of fire, okay? A wall means to join. Now, I want you to think with me and connect with me where we've already been with our definition with Ezra, okay? So, a wall is to join. It is a wall of protection. Ezra is a protection. And we were joined together with Adam to be his protection in the beginning, right? Okay, so a fire... Think back to what Lucifer did, walking back to and fro in front of the fiery stones, okay? So this is what you would think it would mean, burning fiery flame. That's what this thing, this, this uh, is what you think it is. All right, but listen to this. This is what jumped into my mind last week after I got off, after I got off, and I think it had, it had to do with someone's comment and Mary Mission, I think it was you. But think about that. The Bible says he was going back and forth in front of the fiery stones, building that fire, building that fire, building that fire. And what does it say about him today? That he is going throughout the, the earth, roaming to and fro like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's like a roaring lion. That is the key word in that scripture. He is like a roaring lion. He is not the lion. We know the lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah and he is Jesus, our Messiah. The enemy is just mimicking him. He's always tried to be the counterfeit. He is always putting out a counterfeit for anything God created, anything God made to be good. The enemy always has something as a counterfeit. Mark it down all the way from music to sex. Mark it down. And everything in between and up and down, he's always got a counterfeit, okay? So this is our enemy being a counterfeit. He was building those stones in front of the, of the Holy of Holies, in front of that most secret hidden place. And now today, he's still going back and forth and he's still trying to build all kinds of fires, all kinds of fires. He's setting them here and there and everywhere. And none of us know how to put them out. We don't know because he's so subtle and he comes in so crafty and he comes in like such a liar. This is a part of the definition last week that I left out and I think it's on purpose. I don't think I, I forgot. I don't think I missed it. There's nothing by chance. The Holy Spirit always knows exactly when something's supposed to be said. But can I just tell you right now, there's a definition of the word serpent that we left out last week. It is to whisper. Yes, he's always whispering in our spirit ear those lies, the lies of the enemy. But listen to this. It means to prognosticate. I had never heard that word before, so I look that word up. Prognosticate means to prophesy. Who would have ever thought that the enemy could prophesy? But when he's speaking those lies into your ear and you listen, you are listening to that prophecy that he is speaking over you. It's a false prophecy but you're listening to it and you're living it out. The Bible says to beware of false prophets. Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. Beware of false prophets. He is a false prophet. We know the one true teacher. We know the one true rabbi. We know the one true God, the one true Messiah. But the enemy comes in and he tries to be a false prophet to disprove the truth. And we know that he never will. So do not let the enemy prophesy over your life anymore. Don't let him whisper these lies. Oh, we're dispelling truth. Oh, we're dispelling truth. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So then he says, I will be a wall of fire, that joining protection, that wall of protection round about. The word round means to compass. All right. If you are taking notes, I want you to write compass down really big. I want you to circle it. It means to compass, to circuit, to revolve, 
or to surround. Hello, Ezer, we are surrounding aid, okay? Underline that too if you're writing it down. Round about, round about means this, about. In, up, beside, over, beyond, among, behind. It, it means everywhere, everywhere. All around a surrounding shield. Whoo, hallelujah. Now, here's where things start to pull apart, okay? Here's where we're headed, all right? The glory. I will be the glory within, in the midst of her, okay? Kavod. Kavod is the word for glory. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you just want to say it? Kavod. Just wherever you are right now, just say it with me. Just say, if you're in a group, let's just all say it together. Kavod. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't it just roll off the tongue? I just love it. Kavod. And the, the meaning of that is weight, heavy, copious, lots of it, glorious, and splendor. And Melissa and I were talking about that today, and she said, that almost doesn't seem like that could be the meaning of glory. I mean, like heavy and weighty, that, that seems oppressive and that doesn't seem right. And I was like, but think about it. Think about the fact that the weight of the glory of God is so awesome. Think about the word awful. Awful doesn't mean awful the way we think of it. Awful means this wondrous, fearsome thing Spell it. It is K O V K. Sorry, K A V O D. Amy, K A V O D. We will try to uh, put this in the the assignments as well. We'll try to go back and remember to put that in the assignment. K A V O D. It is this awesome, fearful, amazing thing. You know how the Bible says to we need to fear the Lord. That isn't fear in the sense that we're scared to death. Like oh my god, it's oh. It's the kind of awesome, awful reverence that makes you just want to fall on your face before the Lord. You remember the story where Abraham was talking with the Lord and the Lord said that you can't see me face to face. You can't look on me because my glory is so great that it would kill you. But what I will do is I will put, mm, this makes me want to cry, y'all. I'm going to set you up in the cleft of the rock, Whew. and I'm gonna cover you with my hand. Whew. And after I pass by, you can look. Whew. It's that that makes you fall on your face before an awesome God who is so holy that we cannot look on him. He is so beautiful. And he is so holy. And the weight of that is more than these human bodies can stand. Than more than these human spirits can stand. He is so awesome. And he is so great. And it is heavy. It is heavy. But it is a beautiful heavy. Because that's in the, the definition. Glory and splendor. Glory and splendor is who he is. Woo. Okay, we got to go on. Excuse me, I gotta get some water. All right, so then, <clears throat> this next verse, go over to Jeremiah. <clears throat> Flip over to Jeremiah with me, and I've gotta get my tears cleared up because I can't even see my Bible right now. So just hang on, hang on with me just a minute. Jeremiah 31, 22. I was listening <clears throat> to a sermon, okay? Help me, Lord Jesus. I was listening to a sermon, and honestly, I don't even remember who was preaching. But this, I was listening to it because of this verse. Okay, this verse, and I, it jumped out at me, and it stuck with me. And the Lord said, you're going to dig this one out, sister. And so I did. I dug this one out. Now, the, the 31st chapter of Jeremiah is the Lord speaking to the prophet Jeremiah in a vision. Okay, and he is speaking of the regathering of the Jewish people. Okay, he is talking about the Jewish people that have been scattered <coughs> because of their disobedience. Okay, they were scattered. But the Lord is saying, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Verse 3 says this, 
the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and I, and thou shalt be built, O virgin Israel. And we know that Israel was not virgin. We know that they had prostituted themselves. They had gone off and chased other gods. They, have been, they had been adulterous to the Lord. They had done all kinds of wrong, but the Lord was choosing to see them as clean and pure, just like through Jesus, he chooses to see us as blameless and holy and spotless if we are in him and we've accepted him as our Savior. Whoo, whoo. Okay. He says, I will call you back, O virgin Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tambourine, thy tambourine, which is instruments, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. You will go forth dancing. Okay, so this whole chapter is about regathering Israel. Now, can I tell you, ladies, something right now? We are living in this right now. If you are unfamiliar with the Messianic movement, the Messianic Jewish movement that has been going on since, well, long time, but really has been going on with full force, gathering steam by the second from 1948, when the Jewish nation of Israel received her independence again, it has been gaining full steam from now, from then until now. And I'm telling you what, the Jewish people are regathering and knowing their Messiah and many of them are either even gathering on into Israel and going home to Israel. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. So if you are not familiar with it, I challenge you to go look it up. It's amazing. But skip on over to verse 22 with me. All right, he's talking about, I'm going to regather you. I'm going to rebuild. You will not be scattered anymore. You're going to be together. And then he says this in, in verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O backsliding daughter? He's saying, don't, don't keep running away from me. Come back. He says, for the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Remember that word I told you to write down, circle, remember? A woman shall compass a man. I was like, wait a minute, what? 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 So I started digging today, and y'all, I got goosebumps. I, I'm, mm, okay, here we go. Create. We're going to break it down word by word again. Here we go. Are you ready? The word create, all right, means to make, okay? But create a new, it makes you think that he's just going to start over again. Well, that's not what the word new means in the Hebrew. The word new in Hebrew means to rebuild, to repair, to renew. Rebuild, repair, renew means that you are taking something that you have already built and you're fixing it back to its original purpose. I hope y'all are tracking with me. I hope you are going there with me because the enemy in the garden, he came after Eve to destroy her purpose. Her purpose was for the seed to come through her. The seed, capital S, our Savior, our Messiah, our King, was to come through Eve's seed. See, the nation of Israel had to be birthed through Eve and he knew that he had to stop her because if he could bring her down he could bring down the man and we're about to find out why the two are so incredibly crucial one does not usurp the other one is not better than the other one does not usurp or superior to the other at all. We were made to work together like a well-oiled machine. This is not power to the woman. That's not what this is. That is not what this is. This is power to the image of Almighty God, and we are going to stomp on the devil. We are, mm. all right. So he is rebuilding, he is restoring, and he is repairing 
a new thing. Okay, the word for thing means to speak, to appoint, to declare. It means promise. What? He says, I am restoring how I originally made you. I am restoring my purpose for you because I have a promise. I have a promised seed that has to come forth through Ezra. Whoo, whoo. And it's not just Eve. He has a promise through each and every one of his Ezers. Oh, mm. help me, Jesus. Now, here we go. We're getting deeper. Are you ready? Oh, wait, wait. dig, dig, girls, dig. The word for woman and the word for compass are the same word. It comes from the Hebrew of for female, nikaba. It is kaba. All right, it is part of nikaba. It is kava, and it is the same word, woman and compass, and it means to surround. It means to revolve. It means to border on every side. Do y'all remember round about in Zech uh, Zechariah 2, 5? He said, I will be a wall of fire round about her. I will be the glory within the word woman and compass. Same thing. It means that we are to surround. We are to revolve around. We are to border on every side of our men, of our families, of our children. We were meant to be a surrounding military strength and force for our families, for our men. Ladies, and if you are in this group right now and you are not married, do not check out on me because this is in you too. It is in you too. Okay, now listen. The word for man right here, and y'all, just go with me. You, if you've known me five minutes, you know how I am. And if you've known me through all these other studies, you know really how I am. Just go with me here. I got to make a funny. I got to. All right. The Hebrew word for man is geber. Geber. Have you ever called your man a goober before? <laughs> Sorry, I had to insert a funny in all the intense amazement. I had to insert the funny. So now instead of goober, you can call him geber. And you can say, I'm just, I am just speaking Hebrew over you, honey. And it really is. It really is. And it's a beautiful definition. It's much, much better than goober. Much better than goober. <laughs> okay. The way that geber is spelled is... <laughs> geber is biblical, Mary. No, you're not yet. The way that it's spelled is G-E-B-E-R, but the phonetical pronunciation is G-E-H-B-E-R, Geber, okay? <laughs> and the definition, let's get back serious, gather with me, is to be strong, to prevail, to be valiant, and to be a warrior. Now listen, they were made to be a warrior. We were made to be warriors. We were made to be warriors that link arms together together moving forward, doing the work of God, not working against each. We are not opposing forces, ladies. We are forces that are meant to link together and work together. We are both warriors. How can the image of God contradict itself? How? It can't. The image of God constantly works Together, the image of God, the triune picture of God is always in unity. Always. So we are supposed to be in unity together, male and female, because we're both in the image of God. So if you really look back at what the enemy was trying to stop, not only was he trying to stop the seed, Jesus, from coming through, the nation of Israel from coming through, it what he was he wanted to stop to the man he wanted to get to the woman and stop her so that the man could not do his prevailing job he was meant to be the head of the house he was meant to prevail 
The head of the house was meant to prevail. And our part of things is to protect him so he can prevail. Now, <clears throat> this is about to blow your mind. We're going deeper. We're going deeper. As I'm reading this, I could not help that encircling, that compassing about. I could not help but think about a Jewish wedding. And I was like, wow, oh my gosh. The bride surrounds the groom under the chuppah seven times. Okay? Let me read you what I found today. Oh my goodness. Are you ready to have another emoji mind blow? All right? I, read, I found this today. It says, what is the reason for the bride walking around the groom seven times under the chuppah which is the wedding canopy, is it an indication of a husband's power over his wife? Quite the opposite, it says. The bride, by circling the groom, expresses her awesome power over him. Keep listening. The seven circuits are reminiscent of the biblical story of Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land. They came to Jericho, a city known as the key to the land if they could conquer it, okay? The land would be theirs. But Jericho was protected by a big wall. There seemed to be no way in. God commanded the Israelites to walk around the walls seven times. As soon as they did, a miracle happened. The walls came tumbling down and they were able to conquer the city. Similarly, every man has, a, listen to this ladies, has a wall built around his heart. Men are taught to hide their feelings, to create an impression of impenetrability, to make it seem that they have it all figured out. Men create elaborate defenses to hide any sign of weakness or vulnerability and fiercely guard their deepest secret that inside they are sensitive and meek, simple and soft. But a wise woman, do you remember last week, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1, a wise woman builds her house, a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. Oh, a wise woman can pierce that defensive wall. If she surrounds her husband with the protective aura of her love, if she envelops him with affection, and if she makes him feel that he is the anchor, the center, the focal point of her life, that he can feel safe and comfortable then. Wow. When that happens, the walls protecting his heart come tumbling down. Then she has conquered him, all of him. Once you find a good man, encircle him with your love, and he will be all yours. Just, just, wow. That right there takes shut up and pray to a whole new level. You, what, what did the Lord tell Israel to do when they were marching around those walls seven times? He said, don't speak a word. He said, don't say anything. Ladies. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Mm. Our silence has so much power. He meant for us to be active, but keep our mouths shut. Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Do you see now? Do you Are you getting a glimpse now into why the enemy went after Eve first? Woo! Because there was a glory within her. There was a glory within her that the enemy knew that if he got to that glory and he could snatch it away from her, 
that the man who had to be called the spiritual leader of the home, God created him to be in that place. Ladies, we can fuss about it. We can fight about it. We can gripe about it. We can, we can have marches about it. Because we think women are strong. We can have these feminist march. We can have all these crazy marches saying that women have been abused all these years. And you know what? Yeah, we have. But it's because of the enemy. That's why. And because the enemy wants to put the focus on the wrong strength of a woman. It's a false strength. The strength that the world is trying to put out there with the, the women talk and all this crap that's out there now. That is such malarkey. It is the wrong false strength that the enemy is trying to make us feel like that's where our empowerment comes from. Is to down to the man and up to the woman. Downgrade man and we'll be better. That is not true. That is a lie because the Lord God Almighty set in place for the man to be the head of the home. Like it or not, scratch your mad spot and get over it and you get back into your place. Be repaired, be renewed, be rebuilt for the purpose God set in you and then your man will rise to the occasion. How many times did I say it in the last study? If you weren't with us, I said this. If you will speak life into your man, if you will speak the man that you don't see yet into existence, he will rise to that. I promise he will. Right here, all of this confirms it. It's biblical. We have a glory within us that the enemy wants to stop because he knows that if we do what we were purposed to do as Ezers in the beginning, that our men will be able to prevail in what God has for the purpose of their life. Holy moly. Whew. So I start, all right, here's, here's the part. You got to go with me stepping outside the box. So far, we've been fairly comfortable. So far, yes, mind blown, mind blown, mind blown. I get it. However, listen to me. You got to step outside of your natural thinking for just a minute. Stop. Don't think male anatomical. Don't think female anatomical because we're about to just go so deep right now. We're going in this far. Okay. Glory. The word glory. He said, I will be a wall of fire around and I will be her glory within. We already know that word glory is kavod and it means heavy, it means a weight, it means glorious, it means splendor, okay? But have you heard the word Shekinah, glory? Have you heard that? I'm sure many of you have. So I'm thinking, okay, that just kept popping into my head while, while I was studying today. And I was like, okay, I've heard that word for years and years and years. I've never really truly understood what that meant. So I started digging into what is the difference between kavod, glory, and shekinah, glory. What is the difference? Are you ready for this? Shekinah comes from the Hebrew word shekan. S-H-A-K-A-N, Shakan. okay? It is the concept of a physical manifestation of God's localized dwelling. All right? Hang with me. Don't zone out. This is such as the presence or dwelling of the glory of God in the tabernacle in Exodus, okay? Shekinah... In Hebrew, let me before I go into this, let me explain. The dwelling, the Shekinah glory of God, physical manifestation, physical representation of the glory of God. Before the Holy Spirit could come and dwell within us so that we could become the temple of God, okay? Was before Jesus was sacrificed. He was the perfect spotless lamb that was sacrificed. The, the Shekinah glory of God could not take up residence within us. We were unclean, we were unholy, and we were sinful, okay? So we could not take in the Holy Spirit of God, which is the manifestation of the glory of God. So back in the Old Testament, if you know anything about the tabernacle, there was the Holy of Holies. That was where the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God would dwell. Now the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament would come and go. We know this because the Spirit left King Saul, left him. 
King David prayed in Psalm chapter 51, do not take your spirit from me. We know now that once we're saved, the Holy Spirit can never leave us. He cannot come and go. He is with us all the time because Back then in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was a place that in the Holy of Holies, once the, the sacrifice had been made, and those were imperfect sacrifices, we know this, once those sacrifices were made, then the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies. We know our high priest, Jesus, the perfect spotless Lamb of God, has entered into the Holy of Holies once and for all on our behalf. And so now the Spirit of God doesn't have to dwell in a tabernacle temporarily made by hands. The Holy Spirit of God can dwell within us as his temple. Hallelujah, glory to God. We are his vessel, man, oh man. So let's just put that out there, okay? Now, the Shekinah, the word Shekinah in Hebrew, ready, deepest mind blow of the night, is a feminine noun. I about had a heart attack when I read that. Was not expecting that even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Okay? Again, don't you go back into your natural box. Don't do it. Stay out there in the supernatural with me for just a minute, okay? Now, go over to Isaiah 51, all right? Isaiah 51, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> Again, he's talking to Israel, okay? And in verse 9 of Isaiah 51, he says, Awake, awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? All right. Rahab, another one that the seed of Jesus, he came through. Rahab, she is in the lineage of Jesus, okay? And in verse 10, Art thou not it which hath dried the sea? the waters of the great deep that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransomed to pass over. He's saying, aren't you, which is the Holy Spirit, the one who came and made a way for Rahab to be in the lineage and defeated the serpent, the dragon through that? Aren't you the Holy Spirit, the one that came and dried up the sea? Well, can I just tell you, in my Strong's Concordance that you guys know that I absolutely love, and that is where I get all my Hebrew and Greek definitions. I go to my concordance, my dictionary. Well, in that concordance, it does not break down the meanings of pronouns. It's just flat, not in there. If you go look up thou or thee or it or you or any, it says see preface, preface, see what, whatever, however you say that, preface. And in the preface, there's nothing. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, those are there and just ignore them, more or less. And so, I just was like, well, it really has no meaning. Well, can I just tell you, in the King James, there's somewhere in the New Testament, and I can't remember where it says it, but it says that the Word of God is perfect right down to the jot and tittle. Has anyone ever heard of that? Did you know that a jot and a tittle are Hebrew symbols that are over certain uh, letters of the Hebrew alphabet? If you, if you look at the Hebrew alphabet and you see a little dot here, a little slash there, a little thing here or there, that the, right down to those little symbols, God has a purpose for his word. So every thou and every thee and every in the King James or you or what or it, it has a meaning. So we must be careful of the translations when we're, when we're reading them. And don't just take it. A translation is a translation. The King James is a translation too, ladies. And it was translated by men. The word of God was written and inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And he means for us to dig to find his real meaning. For it okay so the pronouns mean something y'all the pronouns what <gasps> the pronouns that we see here in this that says art thou not it all right thou and it are feminine pronouns <gasps> <gasps> thou and it 
literally, literally, and I am quoting this Hebrew expert that I found, quote, literally means you and she. So let's read this. Let's read this. Aren't you not she that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Aren't you not she which hath dried the sea? Remember, do not think in your natural. Do not. I am in no way, shape, or form saying that any part of the Trinity is a woman as we know it. Step outside your anatomical box, step outside your natural box, and go back to what we know is the spiritual DNA of a Ezer, of an Ezer, of a woman. You got to think there. You got to think there, okay? It is the physical manifestation of God's localized dwelling. So when God's physical manifestation came through the Holy Spirit, when you go back and read Exodus, when they were passing through the Red Sea, it says that there was a pillar of cloud by day, or there was a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Hello, that was the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit, and he would move with them. That was the physical manifestation of God in a localized place, okay? Now, we are not thinking sexually. We are not thinking anatomically. I want you to go with me here. This may shock some of you, and you may have to do some more research on your own, but I don't want to shock any of you. You've got to see this. You've got to see this. Luke chapter 1 and verse 35 I'm just going to flip it. I don't have that one marked for whatever reason because, because he dumped it on me right here at the last minute. That's why. Um, just before I got on tonight. Okay. Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. This is where Mary was told that she was going to give birth to the Messiah. This is when the angel came to her and she said, How can this thing be, seeing as I have never been with a man? And in verse 35, it says, The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, all right, we know that the Holy Spirit comes in as physical manifestation of a localized dwelling, okay? So, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Wow. And it says, therefore also that holy thing <laughs> which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. God. Now, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to imply that the Holy Spirit and the Most High came together and had sex, and now we have Jesus. I am not saying that. I am saying step out of that limited mindset that we have in this world. I am saying to you to look at this wondrous thing that is the beautiful manifestation of God. They came together and they created our Messiah. However they did it, I don't know. But all I know is he was from before the foundation of the world. So this is something so marvelous that we cannot get our limited, finite, earthly minds around. We cannot grasp this. But I do know that the Holy Spirit is the manifestation the physical manifestation of the glory, the weight, the heaviness, the beauty, the splendor of our God. And that Holy Spirit has come to dwell within us when we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you so very much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so very much. Now, the feminine nature of God, remember, we were created in his image, male and female. We cannot think so small as to think that this marvelous thing is weird. We cannot, we cannot think that small. We must think supernaturally. We do not serve a natural God. We do not serve a limited earthly thinking God we are here for a moment and we are gone we are going to be in the supernatural the moment this 
temple stops breathing, we will take our first supernatural breath in the presence of Almighty God and none of this will matter anymore. Hallelujah. We will not have to try to figure this out because it will all be made clear. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. We have a spiritual DNA, ladies. Our men have a spiritual DNA and we must ask the Spirit of God to open our eyes. Like it says in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 and 18, Lord, give us spirit the spirit give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can know you better that our eyes the eyes of our heart may be enlightened he's not talking anything about our physical eyes he's not talking anything about our spiritual ears he's talking about our spiritual eyes and our spirit to be enlightened so that we can understand the marvelous deep truth of what is being said here tonight I'm saying this to you, ladies, and my mind is still blown. I'm, I'm, I'm on, I literally am on the other side of the screen with you guys going, whoa. I mean, seriously, it's coming out of my mouth, but my spirit is saying, whoa. Oh, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. If we will live as a true Ezer, if we will be the Shekinah glory of God, he will manifest himself physically. We will become a physical display of his glory in our homes. No matter where you are, if you're married, if you're not married, if you're divorced, if you're widow, it doesn't matter if you will let your spiritual ezer loose. <laughs> you will be a beautiful manifestation of the glory of God where Wherever you are, to your workplace, to your friends, to your, your family, whoever, let that inner Ezra loose. Let her free breathe life into her. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> we were not created to be superior or inferior. I don't care what you've been taught your whole life. Truth has dispelled the lies, the doubts. The fears, uh, the feelings we've got, all the anxiety, all the fear, all the doubt, all of that is disappearing. Remember the definition of dispel when we first started? We are dispelling lies. Oh my word. The enemy has lied to us for so long that he has kept men and women in competition and conflict for thousands of years. He wanted to conquer Eve that surrounding protecting aid, the beautiful one that could show the Shekinah glory of the presence of God. He wanted to conquer her so that he could conquer the man, so the man couldn't do his job, so the man could not prevail as head of the home. He wanted us to squash him. That's what the enemy wants us to do is squash him. And in turn, he wants us to think they're squashing us. Lies, all lies. Help us, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. He was meant to be a prevailing warrior. We were meant to be the surrounding, protecting warrior. Mm. 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 If Jesus, who is the physical manifestation of God, is interceding for us, he sits at the right hand of the Father right now. That's what the Bible says. That Jesus sits at the right hand of, Father, of the Father right now, and he ever lives to intercede for him. For us, if we are letting him be that physical manifestation in us, then we need to be interceding for those in our lives that are so important to us. For our friends, our family, our, our co-workers, our homes, our children, everybody that's important to us, our men. If you are married, top notch. Pray for him. We need to be that circling, piercing, defensive wall of protection and conquering the way that an Ezra warrior was meant to conquer. Now, we are about to wrap this puppy up. Everybody flip over with me to Ezekiel. This is how we're going to end. Did anybody, I know some of you noticed <coughs> the beginning song, um, Ezekiel 37, by the way. Um, the beginning song, oh, I'm reading it out of my other one. 
<sighs> it was Paul Wilbur, by the way, and it was the song Dry Bones. If you didn't catch all of it and you were just sort of letting it play haphazardly, I want you to go back and I want you to YouTube Dry Bones by Paul Wilbur. I want you to look at the one that has lyrics and then I want you to go find one where they are doing the Davidic dance to it. You will be transported to glory. I'm just... Mm, okay, now we are reading Ezekiel 37. If you are familiar with this passage of scripture, I well know this is speaking of the Jewish people and the dry bones coming back together. But just let me have a little bit of liberty here. Go with me here. Let's go all the way back to what the enemy tried to destroy. Not, not just the Jewish people, but he wanted to destroy Eve so that the nation of Israel couldn't even come from her to begin with, okay? So let's go all the way back there, okay? And let's remember what he said to her in the garden. He said, did he say you couldn't eat from every tree in the garden? And Eve said, well, he said we could eat from every tree in the garden except for the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he said if we, if we eat of that, we will die. And the enemy said, you will not surely die. See, what she didn't understand is that she would spiritually die. That her as her spiritual DNA will be all messed up. And spiritual death would come on her. And her bones, her spiritual bones would dry up in a pile. So let's go all the way back there. Now, let's frame up 37 of Ezekiel, chapter 37 of Ezekiel. And I want you to think of Ezra as we're reading this. I want you to think of Eve and all of us Ezra's and the truth that is dispelling lies. Go with me. You're going to get, ooh, you get, mm, I hear the sound. Here we go. Listen, I'm reading from the NIV. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out to the, in the, by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Think of those bones as spiritually dead Ezers all these thousands of years. Okay. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Whew. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. <laughs> I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and I will make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Do you remember that rebuilding? Do you remember that repairing for the original purpose? Do you hear it? Do you see it? So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and tendons, whoo, Jesus, and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Ooh. A vast army of Ezers is rising to their feet. Ladies, I say to you, live. I say to you, Ezers, live. Do not listen to the 
prognosticating of the enemy anymore. He only comes to steal. He only comes to kill. And he only comes to destroy. He has come to destroy you. But our Savior has come to give you life that you may have it to the full and more abundantly. And he says to you, live. So I declare to you tonight, let the breath of the Holy Spirit of God, the manifestation of the glory of God, that he would speak into you that he would breathe into you tonight and you as an Ezra would stand up with this vast army that is starting to rise across this nation. Glory to his mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. I am going to get off of here and I'm going to get on my face before the awesome presence of my God and tell him holy, holy, holy is his name and I pray that you will do the same and I will see you next week. You are beautiful. You are worthy. Oh, girls, you are priceless. More than enough. You are more than enough. I love you. I love you so much. Good night.